All right, everyone, there's a bit more evidence for those of us who claimed when Seth Rich was killed the first time around, you know, long ago uh, during the election, some of us speculated, well, it looks, it looks like this wasn't actually a robbery attempt because no robbery took place. He was just shot in the back. Seth Rich, of course, a DNC operative. Uh, so people speculated, I know I did, that he was, pretty, yeah, he was probably the DNC leaker and he was probably assassinated uh, as a message to other would-be leakers. This is the Clinton MO, and this made sense before, even before this new news, which involves a private investigator hired by Seth Rich's family. He has come out. And he has stated I, that there is evidence that Seth Rich was indeed in contact with WikiLeaks, um, that the laptop involved would show this, and that it's sort of gravitating back and forth between the police and FBI that won't let him look at it, and that they won't talk about it, and it's all very secretive. Yeah, I can believe that. I can, because it makes sense. Seth Rich, look at the details of his killing. He's acting kind of paranoid, kind of whacked out. Like, like he's afraid for his life or something. He's walking home, he gets shot in the back, and, you know, supposedly this is like a mugging. Somebody wants his wallet, and yet his wallet is intact, his, like, $1,000 watch is intact, all of his other shit's intact. Nothing's taken from him. So it's not, it's, I mean, it's not exactly a robbery. Now, granted, this is the D.C. area, so there is a lot of random crime. But which one makes more sense? The DNC decided to whack him as an example after Podesta and others were talking about this in their own <laughs> leaked emails. Or some random person wanted to rob him and then chose not to rob him once they had shot him in the back. That shows clear intent. Okay, I walk up behind some person. I'm going to rob this person. Bang, I shoot him in the back. Why exactly wouldn't I grab their wallet before I run? It'd take me fucking five seconds. Why exactly would, if, if that's my goal in this criminal act, why wouldn't I take the wallet? Why wouldn't I, you know, rip off his watch? Okay, maybe fuck the watch, just grab his wallet. And grab the shirt off his back, his suit, whatever it happens to be. If somebody is acting, acting flaked out, if somebody's acting like, oh, you know, the sort of the I'm being followed stuff. Now, under normal circumstances, the immediate reaction would be to say, oh, the person's having a psychotic break. Stress from work got to them relationship problems got to them, they're developing schizophrenic tendencies, something like that. That would be the, the initial response, okay? Paranoid person, politically connected, maybe gonna go full Russ Tice or something like that. But when that person ends up dead on the same day, maybe their paranoia is a little bit justified. I'd like to drag in as well the strange tale of Michael Hastings. I'm still convinced that Michael Hastings was assassinated, of course. A journalist going after headhunting after the FBI and some of their corruption and, and scandals and then he mysteriously dies too in an auto wreck that makes absolutely no sense his body is requisitioned cremated before it can be uh, privately uh, sort of uh, gone through you know they do a forensic test that doesn't involve the medical examiner initially family didn't want him cremated he was cremated anyway the crash made no sense the fact that he suddenly lost control in a brand new car made no sense. There was never any significant investigation. Michael Hastings was probably assassinated for being a little bit too close to the inner dealings of the FBI. Seth Rich was probably assassinated by the Democratic National Committee or by the Clinton camp itself, you know, loosely in association with the same. Of course, we know the two are basically the same thing. They're screwing Bernie Sanders out of his fundraising money during the election. There's so much crooked shit going on. I think Seth Rich was a Bernie bod or something along those lines. I think he was either an Assange Democrat, somebody who wanted more government accountability, or a progressive, or was just he just felt disenfranchised somehow in a political or social sense. He saw that shady shit was going on. He decided to leak a bunch of material. Unfortunately, he didn't cover his tracks well enough. They found out who it was. Podesta and others were talking about making examples of leakers and whistleblowers. This is exactly the sort of killing you would expect from the Clintons. The Clintons have a mafioso tendency when it comes to political hit jobs, or so it's been claimed. Because there were numerous times in the 90s and later, during the Clintons' administration and thereafter, where people who were too critical of the Clintons ended up dead. 
where people who were, you know, we're not talking about, oh, somebody, you know, you know they make, before you get paranoid, people who like randomly make videos online about how they hate fucking Hillary Clinton, they tend to remain unscathed. But people who actually are, good, are doing the muckraking itself, people who are involved in journalism and especially politically connected individuals who get a little bit too close for comfort for the Clintons, they typically end up either shooting themselves in the back of the head multiple times or they end up getting found dead in the middle of the road with a gunshot to the back in a robbery attempt that, you know, inevitably leads to them not actually being robbed. It fits in right with the uh, old 90s Vince Foster style MO there would have been uh, more than enough motive for the DNC, and Podesta himself talks about this in one of his emails. Oh yeah, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, aghast at the idea of making an example of one of these people in order to prevent others from leaking our material. Well, there you go. You've got a motive, obviously, especially if he was really talking to WikiLeaks, he was almost certainly the DNC leaker, in which case there's a clear motive for them to want to fucking kill him. And they've got no alibi. It's not like they can't hire a hitman at any given time with all their Goldman Sachs money. And you've got a politically connected dynastic family with hundreds of millions of dollars and probably billions more in all sorts of slush money and offshore bank accounts that are, you know, more unspoken for. Massive charities, connections to all of the multinational banks and foreign entities like the Saudis and so forth. Yeah, they can't have somebody killed if they want to and make it look like a, an accident or a suicide or a random robbery attempt or something like that. The, the case doesn't make sense. If you're going to rob someone, you're going to rob them. The idea that you would preemptively shoot them in the back if you weren't comfortable with the gunshot noise and didn't think you had 10 seconds to snatch their wallet before running off, that doesn't make sense to me. Just like Michael Hastings. Just like Vince Foster. Just like all sorts of other people who have gotten a little bit too close for comfort. So yeah, um, Seth Rich is back in the news. Well, not the corporate news. The legacy media is not going to tell you about this. When the legacy media uh, responds to it at all, they call it a conspiracy theory. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. He got shot in the back, didn't actually get robbed, was apparently talking to WikiLeaks and so forth. They're just trying to render it a conspiracy theory. It's, uh, it's something they don't want to talk about. I wonder why. Yeah, could it be because they were uh, the target of those leaks too? Because MSNBC and all these others are working directly with the Clinton camp, Stephen Colbert and all these others. It was literally taking marching orders from Hillary Clinton and from her staff. And yet, uh, yeah, they don't want to report on the murder of Seth Rich, mysterious it is, as it is. I wonder why. They'd rather claim that it's just tabloid material. Oh, this is just a claim. You tinfoil hat wearers are crazy. Yeah, the political movements never have their adversaries killed. It never happened in the history of mankind. Certainly not in the United States. Nobody was ever assassinated here. Yeah, you think back to like Martin Luther King getting killed by the government. Nobody ever gets assassinated in our country. It's to totally never happens. Yeah, it's all tinfoil ad stuff. It's just a conspiracy theory. Shut up, you peasants. Don't look too deeply into this. Don't look into the fact that this PI can't even access the laptop to uh, prove what he's saying. You know, I would think if it was a random robbery, why are they even still holding the computer? If there's no ongoing investigation, then it should be a uh, fair game to forensically examine. Maybe they want to wipe it first, make sure that he can't find any, uh, any uh, data trail leading to WikiLeaks on it. Or maybe they're aware that the, he was in communication with WikiLeaks. Maybe they're sympathetic to the Clintons. They don't want uh, that to get out. Or maybe they're not. Maybe they're trying to screw the Clintons and they don't want some PI taking uh, uh, advantage of the situation and, and him going after them because they're afraid, well, he's just going to get himself killed and then somebody's going to destroy this computer. We need to look through it ourselves. We can safeguard it more easily here at the FBI or whatever. It's always possible. Maybe it's benevolent, but probably not. Poor Seth Rich. He gets robbed and nobody even robs his ship. Yeah, that happens all the time, it seems, when you're uh, in connection with the DNC. That's about all. Peace out.